Or young. <coughs> do any of you know what I do? What's my job? You do actions. <laughs> <laughs> I do do actions. Yeah, I'll tell you what they do. One of the things that they do is to work in schools. Um, but one of the big things in my life is writing stories and writing poems. So I thought what we do is, so I'm a writer. Uh, I thought we'd make a story up together. And I'll just show you how I do it so that you can go off and have a go at making a story up yourselves. So what do you think is the first thing that I'm going to be thinking about? And I'll give you a clue, it's not the time. So what's the most important ingredient that you need in every single story? Without it, it's not really going to be a story. And I'll just have a little take. Turn to the person by you. What do you think it's going to be? I'll give you five seconds. What's the most important ingredient? Turn to the person by you and have a chat. Five, four, three, two. Right, so you two are talking, you two, you two. Yeah, okay, come back together. So what is it? What's the most important ingredient? Might, if you could sit behind everybody so yes. they can't see you. Yes? What the story's about is still... Yeah, it's, it's sort of going to be around that, but there's something else I'm going to work with first. Um, that's the, one of the last things that we're going to do, but we're going to need that, so we are going to need punctuation. What the story's going to be about is actually, you're right, and what's the most important ingredient in the story? Title. Before the title. Before the capital letters. Um, before any of that is going to be a character. So who is our story? We're planning, remember, who's the story going to be about? So I need the name of a character. Now every now and then I'm going to say quick in your pairs. So um, it, some of you will need to be in threes. So everybody's got one or two people to chat with. So we need the name of a character that's going to be in our story. And you also need the name of a character to be in your story. So I'm going to give you ten seconds. Have a quick chat. What will we call our cat? Three, two, one. Come back together. So, let's listen. Let's listen to each other. That's so over here. Yeah. Okay. Go for Fred. And the thing about Fred, when you said Fred, you smiled. And I don't know if I'm going to do a funny story, so I'm going to be thinking about carefully about my choice of the character's name. What do you reckon? Ned. Ned could be. Peter. Could be. Um, Mike. Mike. They're all they're all boys' names at the moment. Frankie. Could be. Tom. Tom. They're all, still all boys' names. Jessica. Jessica. Jess. Let's call her Jess. All right. I'm going to go to Jess now. You will need a, need a name for your story. So just turn to the person by you, or two or three by you, what's your main character going to be called? Give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Come back together. So let's just double check. Come back together. So what's your main character going to be called? Okay, you need a name for your main character. What's yours? Okay, what's yours? Not sure yet. Keep thinking, because you'll need a, na uh, a name for a character. So keep thinking. Okay, put your hands down. Now, can anybody guess what's the next big ingredient? I've now got who my story's about. I've got a girl called Jess, she's about your age. And uh, what do you think your next big ingredient is? Uh, this, the thing that starts the story. In a minute, the thing that starts. I'm going to put that down in my little save it box, because we're going to need some way of getting our story going. But before that... There's a big, big thing. Yeah? Is, um, is it, what, is, is um, yeah, we've already made a note of that, but before that we've got a main character and it's... Where? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got who, then we've got absolutely the setting. Now, whereabouts is Jess at the beginning of our story? She might go to two or three places, but <coughs> good at the beginning, whereabouts is she? Just have a little think. Hang on, just have a think. Now, it needs to be a place that we know well, because you can't describe a setting that you don't know. So where could it be? What do you think? School. Could be in the school. We all know that well. We can describe the setting. We're in business, yeah? In a dark forest. In a forest. Most of us have been in trees, so we could have a forest. What do you think? Uh, I think on a farm. You think on a farm. Now, if you've been to a farm, then you'll be able to describe it and use that and see it in your mind. If you've not been to a farm, you couldn't, yes? 
In the savannah and then in the blue jungle. Ah, if you've been somewhere like that, that would be alright, but if you've not been there, then it's not going to work because you can't describe something you've never seen. Yes? Sorry? In the zoo. Yeah, in the zoo. That would be an interesting place. In the zoo. What do you think? Could be having a picnic somewhere or other. You've got to think where they're having a picnic. What do you think? A beach. Could be down on the beach. If you've had a holiday on the beach, let's say, then that might be quite a good place to set your story. Um, and I think for our story, I'm going to choose the school, which was the first one that came up. But you will need a place for your story. So you've now got the name of your character and you've got where your story will be. I'll give you 10 seconds. Have a quick share with the person by <laughs> We'll come back together. So, <coughs> we've now got, we've got Jess. She's in the school. Now, I've got two other bits to add to the setting. And the two other bits are these. So the first one is, now this is about building up the atmosphere, how we make our leader feel. So the first que next question is going to be, what time of day is it? Okay, just have a little thing. Is it going to be early in the morning? So Jess has arrived really early in the morning. Is it going to be in the middle of the day and all the kids are out on the playground? Is it going to be at the end of the day and it's dark outside? Or is it going to be night? Just turn to your partner, what time of day should we have? Okay, three, two, one. So, um, good, yeah. What do you night time. I thought you were going to say night time. What do you think? I think it's happening in the evening, and then when she's going, going to be alone, and then I get scared and scared. Ah, so you're saying if we have it set in the evening, put your hands down. So we got the thought that if we have it in the evening at night time, it's dark, it's going to feel a bit scary for the reader. So I'm going to go with that. It's night time. Now, the other thing that goes with that, now we've got Jess in the school and it's at night. The other thing that goes with that, and you're going to have to think about the time of day for your story, and you're also going to have to think about this next question. So this, this question here is when, uh, when, so that's when, what time of day, but also, this is another W word, weather is. Are we going to have a very crisp autumn night? Is it going to be a hot, <coughs> sultry night? Yeah. Hot, hot, really hot night? Or is it going to be stormy? Stormy! Misty. Turn your partner, what's it going to be? Stormy. Jess, it's dark. She's there at night in the school. It's snowy. Already it's beginning to feel a little bit scary. Have a quick chat with the person by you about your story ideas. When and what's the weather? <laughs> So, so, 
lands here, this land here. Um, who's your main character? What's he called, or she? Uh, Trevor. You got Trevor. Whereabouts is Trevor? He's in a ghost town. Hang, hang a second. Listen, listen to each other, girls. Listen to each other. You got Trevor. Where is he? He's in a ghost town. Okay, and what time of day is it? It's um, it's just um, it's at dusk. It's at dusk. So the sun is going down over the edge of the horizon, and what's the weather? Um, it's it's there's a sandstorm. There's a sandstorm blowing up in the distance. It's quite hot, but you can see the sandstorm. So it's creating a really good picture for the reader. Okay, so all of you have got that. Now here is the next big question. It's about your character. And the, it's a really difficult question. In, um, it's going to be another W one. Why is your character where they are? And I need, for our story here, we're going to need a sensible reason. Because I've got to be able to write it. So it's no good saying an alien landed and grabbed him and you know, blasted him or something like that. Because I can't write it. I've got to have a sensible reason. So my question to you is... Why is Jess in the school late at night? I need a sensible reason. Turn to your partner. Ten seconds. <laughs> some catch-up. She's trying to catch up with her work. Now, right at the very beginning of the story, she's just leaving the classroom. It's dark. It's snowing outside. I've got two questions. Well, it's two, room for two answers, actually. How is she feeling? Just have a quick chat. How might she be feeling? Okay, three, two, one. Now, we now have to think carefully about, you have to sort of imagine that you're the character. So, if you understand, just think. So at the end of the day, she probably, I reckon, wanted to go home. And the teacher said, no, you've got to stay behind and do your work. I phoned your mum and I've told your mum that you weren't working hard. You had to stay behind and do some extra work. Now she's about to go home. It's dark out there and it's snowing. How might she be feeling? So think about the reality. How might she be feeling? What do you think? So... Let's just go for that. Put your hands down. I think we've got, she's, she's probably cold. She's standing at the edge of the playground. It's dark. And she's a little bit frightened. I'm going to put scared in there. She's a little bit frightened. Okay, so, let's just review where we are. Can you look this way? When we're planning a story, one way of doing it is to think, who is my character? Where are they? What time of day? What's the weather doing? Why are they there? And how is our character feeling? And you can draw that out on something or other rather like that. Now the next thing on is to begin to, and if my nimble assistant would blue tap that up somewhere. Else, the next thing on is let's do a little story mountain. 
You know what I mean by story man? Story man. Yeah, okay. So this bit here is going to be Jess, and she's just leaving the school, she's in the playground, and it's dark, so I'll put a moon, a little crescent moon. And then the snow's coming down, here's the snow coming down, and it's dark, and she's feeling a bit scared. And also, I think there's a bit more to it, she's a bit cold, she's a bit scared. But if it was me, I'd be thinking, oh dear, when I get home, what's my mum going to say? Is she going to be pleased with me? No, no she's not. So she's a little bit worried about what's mum going to say when she gets home. Now that's our basic idea. And that's going to be our opening. Now, I don't know how many paragraphs it will be. One or two, I guess. We'll see. And then, we're going to need something. And somebody raised this about how are we going to start? How are we going to get the story going? What sort of mood and atmosphere do you think we're trying to create here? How are we going to try and make the reader feel? What do you think? Yeah, if we're going to scare the reader, I've got a really good tip for when we get this bit. So at, by this point in the story, she's going to be going out across the playground and maybe even down the road. And we'll have a little trigger at this point to try and scare the reader. So I'm going to put that word there, trigger. We'll come back to this little plan. So, shall we get on with the writing? Yeah? So, we've got to start this off now, sort of thing. Um, she's scared, she's cold. Um, which of those two do you think we could start with as a first word? What do you think? Cold. Cold. Let's go for that. So, here we go. Cold. It's quite a good tip. Think about how your character's feeling. Just write it down as the first word. Cold, comma. She was called Jess, wasn't she? Jess. Um, now, let's have her... She's just in the playground. Jess, are we going to have her walking? Or, or, or is she going to be stopping and pausing? Which should we go for? Pausing. Cold, Jess paused. And now we could have her, now well, she could be looking across the playground. But it's dark, remember. So she's not looking. What is she doing? Peering. peering. So cold, Jess paused and peering or and peered? Which sounds right? And peered. And peered, okay. Cold, Jess paused and peered. What do you notice about our opening? Listen to it. Cold, Jess paused and peered. What do you notice? What do you notice? It's, yes? it's, a, it's alliteration. Now, if we do too much, that's where the sounds, isn't it? Repeat. If we do too much, it will sound silly, but a little bit makes it memorable. Cold, Jess paused and peered through the... Now, remember, it's snowing. Through the something snow. What shall we have? I've left a space there for the adjective. Through the something snow. The Frozen snow, the freezing, freezing snow, the, through the cold, windy, slippery snow. Yeah, too many words possibly there, but through the windy snow, through the spine chilling, spine chilling snow, through the glistening. glistening snow, through the, the white shining snow, the white shining snow, through the chilly. through the chilly snow. Let's go. Lots of good ideas there, and that's where you need your magpie book because you could jot some of them down. Through the freezing snow. Let's get it there. Okay, so now we've got cold. Jess paused and peered through the freezing snow. As it... Now, I could say as it came down, or as it fell down, or as it dropped down, but that doesn't quite work, does it? I mean, this drops, and snow doesn't fall like that. So we need a verb here, as it... Turn to partner, what word could we have? We need a verb. <laughs> Three, two, one, let's listen to some. Now we're trying to build up the suspense as you would make it a bit scary. So we need to make it sound not like a nice, lovely, sparkly, glittery thing, but something a bit scary. What do you think? Yeah. As it floated, sounds a bit soft. As it tumbled, tumbled down. <coughs> as it whizzed quickly. As it whizzed, as it <coughs> crashed down, as it, as it thundered down. Thundered down as it glided down as it poured down as it as it stormed down. It's getting pretty poetry. We have some really good strong words here. Any others? As it swayed down. I suspect of the strongest. I don't know, but I think you're stormed down. Let's listen to it and see if it works. 
Cold, Jess paused and peered through the freezing snow as it stormed down. Sound all right? Yeah, yeah I think it sounds all right. As it stormed down. Stormed down. Now, comma, we could say covering the playground. Can anyone think of another word that means the same as covering, but a bit more powerful? Covering or... What do you think? Yes? Yeah? So that's all right. Hang on, let's listen to each other, yes? Flooding. Flooding. Buried. Burying. That sounds scary. It's buried. Whoa. Dominating. Dominating the playground. Very strong word. Good. Spreading. Spreading. Ah, I'm going to go for your burying. There's some nice language here. Burying the playgrounds. So, whoops. Burying the playgrounds. So, let's just double check. I'm going to reread it and make sure it sounds okay. And then we'll finish our sentence. Cold, Jess paused and peered through the freezing snow as it stormed down, burying the playground like... Can we get a simile in? Hang on. I suspect we're going to say blanket. I've heard it before. So that's a cliche. I'm not going to take that one. I want something new. Can you think of... Now, we're going to say something really, really white. Did somebody say polar bear? What part of the polar bear? Because they're quite fierce animals. What part of the polar bear? What do you think? Um, like being buried in a white fur. Oh, like a polar bear's fur. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a polar bear's fur. Let's. I'll write it down, and then we'll reread it and see whether or not it's sounding okay. Um, we might have to change it a bit. Cold. Concentrate. Let's just see if it works. Cold. Jess paused and peered through the freezing snow as it stormed down. Burying the playground like a polar bear's fur. Like a polar bear's or underneath? Underneath. Underneath a polar bear's fur. I'm not sure about this bit here. I'll tell you what, we'll carry on. We could come back to that. But I think it's working okay. So, we could come back to that bit in a minute. So, I need my uh, female assistant. Nimble as a ferret. Leaping around and putting that bit up. So, we're underway. Now... Have we got the darkness in? No, we haven't mentioned the darkness at all. Um, we, have we mentioned Jess? Um, yeah, we have. How do we know she's in a school? Because she plays around. Playground. Playground, okay. Um, we've mentioned the snow. The bit we've not mentioned is that it's night time, it's dark. Let's just reread. Cold, Jess paused and peered through the freezing snow as it stormed down, burying the playground like a polar bear's fur. It sort of seems okay. Now, um, we need this darkness. We could say darkness. <coughs> something darkness. Now, we need an adjective. Something darkness. What could we have? Something darkness. In a word to describe the darkness. Frightening Black. darkness. No, the Black darkness. Yeah. The disquieting. The disquieting darkness. Where did you, let's have a listen. Where did you get that word from? It's a great word. Your teacher. Your teacher. Your teacher, your teacher is very, very proud of it. What does it mean? Can somebody explain? Frightening and nightmarish. Hang on, I didn't catch that. Say it again. Frightening and nightmarish. Disquieting. If something's disquieting, it disturbs you. Makes you feel uneasy. It was disquieting. So we could say, when, Ms. when Mr. Corbett arrived at the school, finding no teachers in the building was thoroughly disquieting. So say it again, what's the word? Disquieting. Disquieting. The disquieting darkness. What do you notice about those two words? A touch of alliteration. Disquieting. I can only just squeeze it in. I'm not sure how to spell it. But as a writer, I never dodge words. I have my best go, and then I put a dotted line under them, and I can check it later. The disquieting darkness. Now, let's see if we can sort of bring it alive. The disquieting darkness. Something or other. Turns your partner, what's going to do the disquieting darkness? Three, two, one. Together. So, let's have a think. We've got the disquieting darkness, something or other. Yeah. Oh, oh, grabbed her. Grabbed her. 
The disquieting darkness grabbed her. Something like that. I like the way you're doing it. It makes it sound as if the darkness is alive. So that's really quite scary. That at the back. Yeah, the disquieting darkness. The disquieting darkness. Um, stormed as a ghost that was dark. Yeah, we, 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 we're going to, we're going to, yeah. If we introduce that, I know I'm going to not be able to write it, so um, <coughs> you might need to use that in your own story. Yep. The disquieting darkness will traumatise. Uh, traumatized her, just quite the dark. The dark, darkness came behind her as like a wave. Oh, that's an interesting one. That it came behind her. Let's have it sort of. What's coming? Crept. Oh, the discard, disquieting darkness crept behind her or around her? Around, around her. her. You're right. Excuse me. You're right. Yeah. 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 Do you need to go out for a minute? You're okay. If you need to go out, then go out, settle yourself down, come back in. The disquieting darkness crept around her. That's quite creepy, isn't it? Because it makes it sound as if it's alive. The disquieting darkness crept around her. Full stop. Now, let's introduce, um, I think we've got the first bit going. We, we know it's cold, we know it's dark, she's leaving home. I wonder what she's thinking. What do you think she's thinking? She's standing there, it's dark. It's snowy. What do you think she's thinking? What do you reckon? What's she thinking to herself? She's thinking, please, 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 please. Ah, so she's wondering about her mum. I wonder if we can get that in. The disquieting darkness crept around her. Um, Jess wondered. Let's do it like that. Jess wondered. <coughs> Jess wondered. Um, now, what's she wondering? How can you put that into a, the rest of the sentence? Jess wondered. Okay, Jess wondered whether, let's do it like that, whether her mum, Jess wondered whether her mum would be, would be waiting for her or picking her up? Waiting. Waiting, let's go for waiting. Would be waiting for her, okay. Waiting for her, full stop. So, if I go back to the beginning, let's see if we, uh, how it's sounding now. Cold, Jess paused and peered through the freezing snow as it stormed down. Burying the playground like a polar bear's fur. The disquieting darkness crept around her. Jess wondered whether her mum would be waiting for her. As now, we now need, I think we've got enough, we're now on to our second bit up. We need the trigger. So I need here, new paragraph, a dramatic connective. I could write, suddenly, but I think we need something else. Has anyone got another connective a bit like suddenly? What do you think? Could be. Doesn't have to be an L Y word. Yes. Um, That's for the end of our story. Huh? We'd have to save that up. Yes. After um, you put would be writing for her, you could put um, would be writing for her or like a statue. Could be. Save that idea. I'm trying to get the connective here. I'm going to go for at that moment. Here we go. At that moment. What punctuation do I need after at that moment? Uh, Comma. Good. At that moment, comma, she, now, this is my little uh, thing for you, to get the excitement going, look this way, there are two possibilities. She might see something, so I've got an eyeball there, or, I know it's sideways on, or she might, as an ear, she might hear something. So is she going to see something, or is she going to hear something? Yeah. You think here? Okay. At that moment she heard. Now, we need something that's going to be quite creepy. I'm wondering what it is. Turn to your partner and have a quick chat. Chosen all the ideas. What's your name? Abdul. Abdul, you're working really well, Abdul. 
So let's hear from Abdul, let's hear from you, and what I like is, is I don't know your name. George. George, can you choose which one we have, all right? So which do you think, and if you can say why you like the idea, all to the good. So let's start with yours, and then we'll come to Abdul. At that moment she heard... Footsteps coming towards the uh, uh, footsteps crunching in the snow. You got that, George? That's one idea. A voice calling her. Uh, a voice calling her. Well, she thinks this is my mum or not, so that's another second really good idea. Abdul? She heard a sound coming out of nowhere. A sound coming out of nowhere. So you can choose one of those, or you might even mix them together. What do you think, George? A sound coming from nowhere. Ah, why do you go for that one? Yeah, and which is the key word that makes it sound scarier? It's nowhere. Yes, sound. But I love the other two ideas. We could have used any of those. Let's play with it and see whether it will work. Can you close the door for me? Yeah, thank you. At that moment, she heard a sound coming out of nowhere or from nowhere? Out of nowhere. Coming out of nowhere. <clears throat> ah, comma. Calling her. What punctuation could I have then? What do you think? Ellipsis. Ellipsis. At that moment she heard a sound coming out of nowhere. Calling her. Dot. 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 And then. Let's see if we can get all three ideas in. And then. What was it? It was footsteps, wasn't it? And then footsteps. Hang on. Footsteps. Now you had a word, it wasn't coming towards her, it was it's in snow. Crunchy. crunchy. Footsteps crunching their way. Their way towards her. Full stop. So now we have <coughs> we've done quite a bit. We're really building attention up here. It's sound beginning to sound quite scary. I'll tell you what we'll do now is I'll read it through to you, and I've got two questions. One, which is our best bit and why? And two, is there a bit that needs improving and have you got a suggestion? All right? So I'll read it to you, and then it's, which is the best bit and why? Is there a bit we can improve? <coughs> Cold, Jess paused and peered through the freezing snow as it stormed down, burying the playground like a polar bear's fur. The disquieting darkness crept around her. Jess wondered whether her mum would be waiting for her. At that moment, she heard a sound coming out of nowhere, calling her, and then footsteps crunching their way towards her. Quick discussion, what do you like and why? Can it be improved? Then footsteps, and then footsteps crunching their way towards her. I'll just read all of it to you. At that moment she heard a sound coming out of nowhere, calling her. And then footsteps crunching their way towards her. So you liked? It should be, it should be three dots. <laughs> Can you it see these three <laughs> dots? You mean the bit here? Yeah, we've got three dots, haven't we? But you like this bit here. Footsteps crunching away towards her. Which is the word that you especially like, or words? In this crunchy. Crunchy. And what, can you say why you like that bit? Why you like that word? Because it sounds like it's mean crunch, crunch, crunch. Concentrate this way. Somebody else give us something they like, yes? I like um, the part where you said, um, and then the footsteps crunching their way towards her because it's, uh, it's, it's frightening. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of, it's that, isn't it? And then, so it's sort of building up, because we've got a sound coming out of nowhere, calling her, and then sort of getting worse and worse and worse. Not only is it a sound calling her, but then oh, footsteps, and if it's footsteps, it means somebody is coming towards her, and that's scary. So the way the writer's built it up here, you're right, is effective. Good, what did you like? 
I like, I like the one when, when, when something was calling her. Yeah, okay. The calling bit. Is it that word there? Yeah. Calling. Why do you like that? Yeah, so it's really, that is really getting your imagination going. You're really beginning to worry. Okay, is there anything that anybody likes in this bit at the top or over there? Somebody else? George, you tell us. The simile. Oh, the simile. Like a polar bear's fur. I thought that was good. Why did you like that one? But we're saying the snow looks like, reminds us, that it's a polar bear and they're quite fearsome creatures, yes? I like it when it's a, like, the burying the blade, burying the blade burying. burying, why do you like that bit? Because it's like, um, you, it's like, um... What does it remind you of? Burying the dead person. Burying the dead person. It's almost as if the playground is a dead thing that's been buried. So that begins to build the tension. Now, is there any place it could be improved? Or is there any bit that doesn't quite work? Abdul, go on then. And when it, when it says, um, the burying the playground like a polar bear's foot, it mm. should be burying, a, bur burying the playground like it was under a polar bear's foot. Ah, yes, I was wondering a bit about that as well. I think you're right. We might need to play around with this a little bit more. Um, I'm not certain, it doesn't sound quite right to me. Is there any other place where it could be improved? Any other ideas? Or is it sounding okay? Okay, now, just before you go, what are the key things that you can take away and use when you do your story? If you were going to plan your own story, what are the key things that you might use from this little session? Either about how to plan it, or how to write it. Just have a quick chat, what have you learned is what I'm asking. <laughs>